Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of The Fogo Life. I'm your host as always, Captain Ron. Hey, it's that time of year again. It's almost grilling season. So I'm gonna show you seven simple things that you can do to your grill to make a full season of chilling and grilling that much more enjoyable. Let's go ahead and get started with number one. Okay, now the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do a deep cleaning of the inside. We're gonna take everything out of the inside here. We're gonna take the grate out, the convector. We're gonna take out all the ceramics. We're gonna clean this thing out like you've never seen before. We're gonna get every single piece of ash out of here and start with an absolutely perfectly spick and span clean grill. All right, now look at all that ash in there. We gotta give this thing a good cleaning. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean out the insides here. I wanna take out all the ash. So I'm gonna remove my blazer ball because I use that every time I light this. Now what I wanna do is I wanna clean this all out. You could use a little dust pan, grab yourself a little brush like this, a dust pan and get this out of here, okay? But what I wanna do is I like to take my shop vac. It doesn't matter what size shop vac you have. You have a big one, a small one, but here's the important things, okay? Is this filter. They make a specific filter that's made for ash, okay? So when you go to your local hardware store, go to Ace, whatever, ask them for an ash safe filter. It's really important because what happens with the shop vac is it sucks the air in and blows it out the other side. If you don't have the right filter in there, it's going to blow dust everywhere and your other significant other is not going to be very happy with you because there's going to be a mess everywhere. So get the right filter and set up your shop vac. Now we've got our shop vac all set up and ready to go. I shouldn't have to tell you this, but I'm going to because otherwise somebody will do this. Make sure the coals are not hot, okay? Do this before you cook next time or a couple hours after you shut your egg down. Make sure the coals are not still lit and burning, even warm, okay? You'll create yourself a huge problem. But all you do now, switch her on and vacuum away. All right, let's get to sucking this ash out of here. That's better, now I can hear again. Pretty cool. Now when we pull this out, okay, it could be the, this or your kick-ass basket, you're still gonna have a bunch of coals in the bottom. So we're gonna now vacuum those out. And now we just continue taking out the insides, all right? Being very careful. Remember, this is all made of ceramic. We don't want it to crack. But while you have a cleaning here, this is a great time to inspect your ceramics because you may find something like I found here. My fire bowl has a massive crack through it, okay? Now, is it still usable? Absolutely, it's definitely still usable. Do I want to replace it? Absolutely, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get a new fire box for my XL Big Green Egg here. But meantime, we're gonna continue with our cleaning, all right? Get this out of the way. Continue with our cleaning because there's still some ash left inside there. Now our next step is real simple. This is a little pro tip for you that I came up with on my own. Take an aluminum foil ball, wad it up like this. Now we're going to what to do is we're going to scrape the entire inside of the whole egg with this. We're going to get all the ash and everything off of the sides. Okay? It doesn't do a lot if you don't have a lot in there. Depends how much you have built up, but it could really get a lot of extra stuff off here. You can see here, let's give it a nice cleaning. See the difference between where I just did it and where I didn't do it? Okay, so we're getting all of that off of there. Now what we have left after all of that is some ash where the holes in the firebox actually let ash fall through. And it's not too bad here, but it can get gunked up. So you wanna make sure to take everything out. That's why we pulled all the ceramics out. We're gonna clear this out. Now I'm gonna vacuum this out as well. Now that concludes our clean out. So what we did is we took out all the ash, we took out all the ceramic internal parts and cleaned the whole thing out. Why? Because we're gonna start fresh for spring, spring cleaning. 
Now what, what happens though is with a fresh start, we're gonna get clean burning fires, everything's gonna be. So make sure that as you're using your grill, every three or four uses, you're kind of repeating this for clean out. You don't have to do a full one like that, but make sure you're taking out the bulk of the ash at least every three uses or so. All right, some simple reminders as you're putting this back together. When you put the fire bowl in, make sure that the hole in the fire bowl lines up with the hole in the front, okay? You wanna have as much airflow as possible. If you don't do that, you're gonna have limited airflow, won't be able to get your grill up to temperature. No, not in that. We're gonna replace that. We're gonna replace it with a kick ash basket. You can see it's well used, but these things work like a champion. They increase airflow, makes cleaning out much, much easier. So get yourself a kick ash basket. There's a link below. You know, it sounds silly, but there are a couple things to watch out for. Like that, like I said, that was one. The other one, you wanna make sure that you're putting everything right in the center of the grill. The, the whole grill works off of airflow. So you wanna have the same size space all the way around your fire ring and your fire bowl. So make sure that you're centering them beautifully and have this quarter to half inch gap all the way around, okay? Now, convector goes back in. So we'll grab the grate, grate goes back in. And voila, we have a cleaned out inside of our big green egg. And number two on our list is something that some people like to do, some people don't believe them. it's a little bit of a controversial topic. It's called the clean burn. Now, what a clean burn is, is filling this thing up with charcoal. You're gonna cook it at 700 degrees or hotter for at least two hours, okay? What it does, it burns off all the oils, it burns off all the grease, burns off everything from the inside. Your ceramics will come out looking white, everything. But we already did an entire whole video on that. So if you click this link right here, you can see how to do a clean burn, how the proper way to do it is, what the results look like. The whole entire thing is covered from A to Z right there. So if you wanna know the clean burn, hit that link and watch the whole video for yourself. The third thing on our list of spring maintenance and annual maintenance to do is gasket replacement. Now, I wish I had some new gaskets to replace this with. <gasps> look at that, a gasket replacement quick. How very convenient was that? So we have two different types of gasket. We have this one's called a Rutland gasket. I highly suggest you use an original equipment manufacturer type gasket. Here's why. The Rutland gaskets, they work great. They really do, but they may void your warranty, okay? These things come with a lifetime warranty. You don't wanna do anything to mess with that up. Then we also did a full video on how to replace your gaskets, okay? You can check out the whole thing there. None of mine need replacement, so I'm not gonna bother with it because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But we have this beautiful gasket repair kit. It comes with the tool that you need to scrape off all the old gaskets. It comes with all the new gasket material, everything to do the top, the bottom, and the uh, the chimney too. So it's all right here, but it's, 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 it's one of those things that the clean burn, if you do a clean burn, guaranteed you're gonna need to replace your gasket, all right? Even if you're just cooking hot, if you're cooking pizzas, you're doing a lot of hot cooking, sooner or later the gasket's gonna wear down, it's gonna burn off, you're gonna need to replace the gasket. So it's a great thing to know how to do. So every year, I suggest every year to six months, just inspect your gaskets. Take a look at them, see how kind of shape they're in, make sure they still have some life to them. If they're still good, leave it alone, okay? Like I said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. There's no reason to. But if they find it, they're really worn out or they're, they're coming off, sometimes they might get old and it's lifting up a little bit, then it's time to replace your gasket. It's real simple to do. Again, we did a video on it. There's right up there. You can check it out for yourself. Next on our list is number four, tightening up all the nuts and bolts. You won't want to have your nuts having a problem. Anyway, so it requires a couple of simple tools. A Phillips head screwdriver, okay? This is a one half inch wrench a 7 16 inch wrench, or if you're lucky enough to be able to find one, Big Green Egg actually makes a tool that has a thing for all the different nut sizes on here. So it's really important because there's nothing worse. If you've been on the Facebook forums, you've seen where people open up their dome and guess what? It just crashes right out the back. That's no good. The reason that happens is called thermal expansion. And what that is, is as things heat up and cool down, heat up and cool down, they tend to loosen. So all the different nuts around here, you wanna take your wrench and go around and tighten up all the little acorn nuts on here. You wanna make sure every single one is tight because if not, what's gonna happen is that sooner or later, it's gonna loosen up enough that you open it up. And like I said, the dome's gonna come crashing out the back. I've seen it happen a million times. Maybe not a million, but a lot of times. We don't want it happening to you. So grab your 7 16 wrench and go around and make sure that every single one of these acorn nuts is tight, okay? You don't have to wait to do this every year. Do this about once every six months because it's the most important one to do. I probably should have made it number one. These ones on the back here are really important, the ones that connect the hinge, because if they're not tight, what's gonna happen is that as you're using it, they're gonna shift and you're gonna get an underbite, an overbite, or even worse, an air gap, and you don't want that. So always make sure that these ones are super, super, super tight. Did I mention super tight, did I? Same here with our hinge nuts. You always wanna make sure your nuts are really nice and tight. Nothing worse than loose nuts. All right, There's nothing good can happen out of that. See, mine were all loose, so it's a good thing we're doing this. They all needed to be tightened. 
See? Now this is where you're going to need your half inch wrench. Okay, these ones on the back here, this is what holds your lid on. This is what holds the bands on. This is what holds everything together. Now, you'll notice that these are super tight. They're already super tight and they are bent. They're supposed to be bent. That's how you know that it's tight enough, okay? Oh, I'm gonna bend it, it's gonna crack my dome. I guarantee you it will not. These are supposed to tighten so much that the factory tells you to tighten them until these bolts bend. So this is perfect. And the last part of this till we move on to our next step is that you wanna take your screwdriver and if you're using like an older style nest, just make sure that all of the Phillips head screws are tight because a lot of people don't think to check those and I've actually seen these fail too. They use them for a long time and all of a sudden the screws loosen up and it collapses. We don't want that to happen. So. It's a good idea to make sure that all your screws on here are tight as well. The next one is number five, is to check for an overbite, an underbite, or an air gap. All three things are really bad. If you don't know what they are, it's an overbite is when you have the dome and the base touch like this, but an overbite means that the dome sticks out in the front further than the bottom does, okay? That's not good. It's gonna create an air gap, won't allow for good cooking. Same thing with an underbite, means that as you go, the dome closes, it doesn't go all the way to the front of the base. So you wanna make sure that they're matching up beautifully. Now let me show you how to adjust those. Come on. The first step when you're adjusting these things is to disconnect the hinge. So open up your lid and just disconnect the hinge just like that, okay, the spring. There's no problem, it's nice and simple to do. Now if you're adjusting for an overbite or underbite, there's a couple of things that you have to do. You have to loosen all of the nuts and bolts that are attached here. These ones that, that are, you can make the adjustments here. Your half inch nuts here, you're gonna, loosen these up here. The reason being is that you want to have to be able to adjust the bands, okay? If you have an air gap, if you have an overbite or underbite, you may have to adjust the height of these bands. When you tighten them back up, make sure that the bands have the same amount of space all around. Make sure the dome is sitting perfectly. And then when you're done, you just tighten everything back up, okay? And that's it. Your overbite or underbite should be gone. Again, we did full videos on those, like I said before. So if you want to check on them, go ahead and check it out. Number six on our list is our convector cleaning. So to get to the convector, we're going to take the grate off. But I should have covered this before when I was talking about cleaning out the insides. You always want to make sure you start with a clean, clean, clean grill grate. All right, there's a couple ways to do it. You can use a wire brush like this. You just simply go back and forth across like this and clean it off. We sell these, I prefer these, okay? This is wood. Now, one of the big problems with the wire brush, yeah, it gets it really clean, but these little wire bristles can break off. They've been known to get caught in food and there's a ton of documented cases of little wires being stuck in the back of people's throats. We don't want that. So, we sell these. It's a wooden grill scraper and it works great. This is a brand new one, but if you use it for a while, okay, once you start using it, it will actually form little grooves in here to match to your grate size. So it works out really perfectly. It gets the grates beautifully clean and I highly recommend this. Now, let's get to the convector. What is with the aluminum foil today? We're gonna to use the same thing. Aluminum foil is a really great thing to use. Now, the reason you wanna clean your convector, okay, everybody says, oh, what's the big deal? There's a number of reasons. First of all, you can see I have some buildup on here. There's some fats have dripped on here. As that's cooking, that's going to be old stuff in there. Guess what? It heats up and it's going to create a beautiful, acrid, bitter taste. Nobody wants that. So you can use a paint scraper, okay? You can use a spatula. I like to use a piece of aluminum foil, okay? Just go across it like this and get as much of everything as you can off of it. You can see this works really well, okay? So we're going to get all this stuff off of here. I'm going to go get a paper towel and wipe it off so you can see just how much stuff has actually come off of this thing. All right, wipe her off. What a difference from when we first started to now. You can even read the name, okay? It's nice and clean. Another thing I like to do before I cook the next time is take a piece of aluminum foil. It's magic how that appears, all right? And cover your convector with a piece of aluminum foil. Why do I want to do that, Ron? Here's why, okay? Because I told you to check your ceramics. These things can crack. When the oils and everything get down on there, that convector is made of ceramics. It's porous. Those oils, the liquids, they all sit, seep down in there and get stuck in there. What happens is when the thermal expansion happens, remember that term? When it expands and contracts, expands and contracts, it's gonna cause this to crack a lot quicker. So if you prevent the oils and juices and fats from getting on the convector, this will save you a ton of time and a ton of frustration and a bunch of money too. Now there's one last thing left to do. All right, we're gonna put this back together. Our insides are clean. It has to do with this, your dome thermometer. You should check this once every six months, if not at least every year, okay? The reason thing is it does come off. Sometimes they come from the factory miscalibrated or uncalibrated, so we need to calibrate it. It's really simple to do. I'm gonna take it out. We're gonna dip it in boiling water. Let me get a pot of water boiling. I'm gonna show you how easy this is to calibrate your dome thermometer. 
Now let me show you how easy it is to take these thermometers out. There's a little clip on the inside of here. You just kind of bend it towards itself. You pull the clip out and pull the thermometer out. Here's the way that it works, okay? There's two holes, so you can, just goes right through the two holes. When you want to take it out on the inside, just pinch them together and it slides right off. Pretty cool. So what we did here is I got a pot of water at a rolling boil. Water boils at sea level at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Celsius, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> but what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're calibrating it. So there's a number of different ways to do it. You can hold it with tongs like this. What I like to do, I like to just take it open, a box wrench like that, just set it in here. Now we're going to put this as far into the water without touching the bottom of the pot as we possibly can. We're looking for 212 degrees. As you can see, it's going up, up, up over there. So wait till it stops moving. So our final temperature that is set at is 225 degrees. So we want to back it off just a little. Now fixing it is really simple. We simply turn it over. We take our 5 8 inch wrench and there's a little nut on the back here. Take that off so you can see it better. The little nut on the back here. So all we do is we're going to turn it backwards just a touch, just a little hair. Okay. We'll redo it again. Should go right to 212. Maybe I over adjusted. No, it's coming up. 200. I'm going to give it one more little touch. Okay. Just like that. Set it back in. And there we are. 212 degrees on the money. And there you have it. Perfectly 212 degrees right where we want it. All we do now, take this and make sure you put this little rubber bushing back on it because that's what's going to keep it waterproof and keep the water from getting in from the rain. We don't want rain inside our egg. All right, we do that. We put our little clip back on here and voila, we're done. Folks, that's A to Z, one through seven of all my annual maintenance tips. I think that if you find that you do them, you're going to have a much more pleasurable experience. Your egg is going to last a lot longer. The ceramics are going to last a lot longer and you're just going to have a better overall experience. It's going to be excellent. <laughs> you're going to have an excellent egg experience. Get it? Egg. Uh, anyway, I'll leave that alone. Guys, we have some awesome stuff coming up. Listen, we're striving to hit 100,000 subscribers. Once we do, there's going to be a massive giveaway. So make sure that you subscribe to our channel. Give us a like on the video. What the heck? Go ahead and give us a thumbs up. All right. And um, that's all I got for you. Maintenance, it's important to do. It's a little bit of a pain in the neck. It's going to take you an hour or so, but it's well worth it. You're going to have a beautiful grilling season chilling and grilling and having fun. So remember to get out and grill. I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life, all right? Captain Ron, out. <laughs>